This SWX production is brought to you by AmeriCool Heating and Air and Jeremy Brock, your local mortgage expert. Some players moved out of Washington to play football. But on the other side of that story are the players and programs left behind. Certainly not the only team, but the West Valley Rams had two players that took an opportunity to leave the state. What are you guys planning on doing with that position now? Next man up. I mean, that's again a cliche, but it's really true. I mean, we again, like I told you earlier, we have so many guys coming back and very lucky to have so many guys coming back that, that you know, it's a lot easier for somebody to step in and, and fill a void like that and uh, be able to just keep it rolling. And we have, and we have good kids coming up in those positions. So uh, it really nothing I would lose sleep over. Do what you got to do. Go play wherever you got to play. They, they're fortunate enough to have that opportunity down in Arizona and like live down there and look great for them. I had my opportunity in Texas and Texas isn't working out. So just sometimes how it goes. We lost two of our teammates, unfortunately, and I was really close with my quarterback, just like any lineman is really. But it's, I told him that I wasn't mad at him because, of course, everyone wants to be mad, say, why are you leaving us? Why are you abandoning us? But it's like I know this football is a business. They've always said that, in especially when you go into college or NFL, any of those guys, are, it's a football's a business. So I just said that I'm not mad at you, but I'll support you and the, my brother. So I'm going to support you through it all. I'm not going to be mad at him for because football is football and you've just got to find a way to play and he's trying to get to the next level so however he's going to do that he's going to do that and the only bad the bad thing was just that the chemistry that I had with Isaac was so great it was just it, it was unheard of I mean we hung out all the time he was like my best friend so that was a little tough but we I'm in said we've got a lot of young guys and we're ready to roll whoever shows up you know, I wasn't up, upset about it at all. And I, we haven't heard from the WI and what they're going to do with kids like that. I can't imagine they're going to give them two seasons in, in one calendar year. But, uh, you know, we'll wait and see on that. Team standpoint, do you feel like it, like it hurts the team at all? I mean, Isaac is a phenomenal player, and so is Christian. Christian was starting on defense. Isaac is a three-star recruit, and he was the starting quarterback. So whatever they do is up to them. But as a team... I feel like we will be okay because we still have a young quarterback who I believe in, and he's going to be behind a senior offensive line, so he's not going to be getting a lot of pressure. He can have time in that pocket, make passes. And if that kid just keeps on grinding at it, be okay. And if it, we get another middle linebacker fill in, perfect. I believe in the young players at West Valley. I've seen a bunch of them play, and I know what type of athletes they are. They're fantastic athletes, and so I'm not worried. It's my fifth year. At, at West Valley High School, and I was at Eisenhower uh, for, boy, about 15 years before that. So I was pretty familiar with the Big Nine, and as West Valley uh, decided to opt up and play in the Big Nine, it was pretty easy for me because I had a pretty, a pretty familiar with the Big Nine and, and everything about that. So it's been a great move for me. I was a West Valley graduate, so it was kind of full circle and coming home, and um, it's, it's been great. And oh, here comes my cat flying through. What positions did you play? Uh, well, hey, I'd like to tell everybody I'm a quarterback and a receiver and lie, like all the big guys do, but I was a lineman, man. I, I was down in the mud. I can't lie. <laughs> we play in the same field that, that, you know, I played on and all that. I probably worry more about like the enrollment differences and things like that. I mean, you know, we played Chiawana a year or two ago, and I mean, they've got over 2,000 students and, and we've got about 1,100. And so we're, we're a mid-range 3A school size-wise. And so, you know, it, it is a struggle. I mean, you know, they just have, everybody in our league has more people to choose from than we do, but our, our kids work hard and, and they, they, they really have a good sense of community out in West Valley. They, they kind of really rally around athletics. Um, when you come to our games, our home side is packed. And, and it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a West Valley Ike or a West Valley Davis game. Um, they, they come out and they support Oh, Coach Iman, he's a great guy. I mean, I just love him. He's, you know, he was uh, very, like, 
supportive of me when I was in that competition with Isaac at quarterback my uh, freshman and sophomore year. And he saw that he, he really believed in me when, you know, a lot of guys were steering towards Isaac. And even though they ultimately went with Isaac, Isaac is, is, a, is a heck of a quarterback. And I, I, can't, I can't debate that, but I even still believe that I was, I was a great athlete and he wanted me on the field. So, I mean, he put me at receiver and he, he gave me an opportunity. He started me, he gave me opportunity to, to strive. And I mean, it's, it's going pretty well right now. I mean, he's a, he's, he's a great guy, just really uh, connected with his players. And he's just got a great personality. He loves to joke around with us. And when it's time to work, he'll put us to work. recruitment it was going really well I had some D1 interest and then as soon as COVID hit it just kind of the dead period hit camps got canceled that I was scheduled to go to to meet some coaches um, that was a little tough I mean I just try to stay positive I guess that's as much as we can do right now just try to limit the negativity because then we're if we just keep being negative and negative and we're not going to get out of this at all I mean it's just gonna keep setting you back and, and further back from all the work we did before to get to this point. So you just gotta keep working forward and use this as an opportunity to be even better than we would have been in the fall. Like we're gonna be bigger, we're gonna be faster, we're gonna be older. So I think that a lot of kids, and I see a lot of kids doing this, is, is they're, they're using this time to work really hard to get even far better than nice they would have been this fall. Wow, oh nice man, catch. I was a late bloomer. I was a total late bloomer. I didn't know how to recruit. I didn't know what to recruit. Like, these are things people don't tell you. It's things you have to figure out and watch other people do and figure out for yourself. So I finally started to get it figured out after my junior year of football. I'm like, oh, I have to dedicate my Twitter account to this. Cause like, there's no like official recruiting site. And I was like, no, you have to go on the Twitter and socialize with the coaches and put yourself out there. You have to basically sell yourself, have to, Learn a few skills of marketing and business. <laughs> the work I'm doing by myself, like the, the gym and then trying to just keep in shape and stuff like that. Um, the best way, I mean, the only way that I've been able to get recruitment and then is just is that Twitter, just like trying to market myself, you know, put myself out there. So I just got to, I try to like put clips out there. Since they can't see me in person, still try to put like extra film basically just out there so that they can see keep talking to coaches dm coaches ask them how they're doing you know keep keep your keep your name in the back of their mind sort of thing you know the real opportunities now i think for a lot of these kids are taking full advantage of these combines that we're, we're going to be having um throughout the state and do as many of them as you can that is your game day um, and it's doing the little things. Uh, it's getting out to the track, working on your 40 time. It's working on the different drills, the broad jumps, the throws, all of the things that they want to test you on and going out and putting your best foot forward. Um, and that's really the opportunity now. Uh, Cause they, and it, what it does is it help brings, I think clarity and more decisiveness to the recruiting process is like, okay, how tall are you? How much do you weigh? What do you run? How quick are you? And all those various drills that it takes to play at that next level come through. He went down to a, a combine in Eugene and there's a kid from Portland who's gonna be a junior on a laser, goes out and, and throws down a 4-3 on a 40. That, that kid's life just changed. That kid's life just changed. And he's not now just a small regional recruit out of Portland, that's national stage. When you're in high school running a laser timed 4 3, 40, that's flying. And it, it's, it's getting on those kind of radars where people then can begin to, to start recruiting. And you get on a national stage. And even if it's, in, even for those that are there, as long as people know what they're working with, uh, there's just a lot more comfort in the data. And, it, and, and those combines is, is, isn't your mom and dad telling coaches that, oh, no, he's six, you know, six, eight, and he's not. Um, it's not saying, oh, he's 275 and he's not. Uh, these are real numbers and redrills, and it gives them the opportunity to get familiar with the athlete and then make the determination, can they play at this level? Like the biggest thing to look forward to is that I can be even bigger, I can be even faster, and I can work on my craft and become a way better red wide receiver. And I could possibly, because of those attributes, I can perform better come spring ball 
than I would have this fall. So I'm thinking like I want I should have from my last year at my junior year, I there should be a big gap in separation in performance in all kinds of the, in that in that area of on the field. I think that's like the that's one of the big positives to look at it. Like I'll be I'll be 18 by the time we start. So I'll be 18 playing playing high school football. So that's that's a huge deal. I mean, I think as far as just almost being a grown man, like you have, we'll have a lot of grown men playing football out there. I'm just trying to hopefully work my way up back to those, a couple of those, those D1 interest level. There's a few camps that are able to be on right now with college coaches. And I think it, it's just gonna take like every opportunity that I have to play football, to put on film. Like with this seven on seven, this was really huge for me because now I get to, for these tournaments, I at least get to have some extra film that I could put out there and just try to go to every camp possible, the select few that there are to try to, I mean, show as much as I can to the college coaches. It's been hard on the kids. You can see the disappointment in their faces, the uncertainty of what's going on. Um, it was uh, it was interesting, you know, back in March when the schools did shut down. You know, what are you going to do? You know, some took some time off, rightly so. Focus on school, rightly so. Um, others I know just kept grinding and working at it, and that's where I was fortunate, is having a gym downstairs, and. Uh, you know, a very good friend and friend of mine, Kevin St. Martin. Um, they, him and Kevin and another friend of his, just they just started lifting every single day, and they did not miss a single day for four months. Working out pretty hard downstairs in his uh, dad's basement. I got a bunch of uh, weight equipment. I got a squat rack, bench press, some dumbbells, some power bars, and we've just been uh, doing what we can in the downstairs of his basement. Uh, obviously, we can't get everything in, but. We can get a lot of the main lifts in, the squats, bench, power cleans, uh, military presses, things like that. Since COVID started, how many new looks have you gotten? Like all of them. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Every, a lot of schools, a lot of schools. I'd say probably six schools. Yeah, like I've had colleges come to my school and like look at our players, but like none like actively texting me, telling me to call them, no head coaches, and none of them were like texting me and going out of their way, but now that I've been able to showcase myself. You know, he put on 40 pounds, 6'3", 260 in his strength, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of schools interested in, in, in wanting to pick him up with with his his genes and, and, and just who, the, the type of guy he is. I mean, any institution be proud to have a guy like JP. And so I graduated here from Yakima from Eisenhower High School in 1989. I uh, went to the University of Notre Dame for three years as a scholarship baseball player. Got drafted by the Florida Marlins in 92. Uh, signed my professional contract for baseball after my junior year. And went back to school every fall until I finished with my undergraduate econ degree. All right, so it kind of started off with my great grandpa, Frank. He's the guy in the fedora back there. Went to the University of Notre Dame to play football for Newt Rockney. He was good, but even better coach. So he started coaching there, and then he had like four undefeated seasons consecutively. He was like five-time national champ. You know, and during his era, he was he was the Nick Saban of today. And you know, he ran through between 46 and 46, 47, 48, and 49. He never lost a football game at all. Um, but he was a fantastic coach. Um, and what he did, even when he was at Boston College for two years before Notre Dame, I mean, he took BC to their first Sugar Bowl in 40, and then he started coaching Notre Dame in 41. Uh, but just to hear the stories of his commitment to execution from his former players when we were there was always kind of fun. I mean, some of those old, you know, old uh, war hearts, you know, they just, they're just comical in, in terms of the, none of them can walk right. This is back when it was the gladiator days. Uh, but a lot of neat men um, that you got to come in contact and just to hear the influence that my grandfather had on their life was always really inspiring. And it really wasn't until I think my brother and I got back to South Bend to Notre Dame that you really started to kind of understand just 
who he was and what he did accomplish as a football coach. Once he was done with football, then my boompa, my grandpa, played football at the University of Notre Dame and won a national championship. And, and then after my boompa was done playing football, then came my dad, who was actually a baseball player. He played baseball at the University of Notre Dame. But then the guy, the big picture is my Uncle Bubba, who played at the University of Notre Dame, was a three-time captain, I believe, at right guard, and then he went off to play in the European Football League and for the Arizona Cardinals and Green Bay Packers. Now here I am. <laughs> and we, we kind of always looked at JP as he was always so small. You know, when you looked at his dad and his uncle and, and you know, them both being at Notre Dame and, and being high-level athletes, and, and you just kept saying, when are you going to, like, just, just jump and grow? And finally, he's starting to hit that. And um, I, I, well, I tell you what, he's going to be a handful for, for some offensive tackles. I'm sure there, yeah, I'm sure he's feeling some expectations. You know, there's got to be some pressure. I mean, great grandfather to grandfather to dad to uncle, and then you had a an aunt Regan who went to North Carolina. You know, there's there, there's going to be some pressure, but you know, you just got to back JP and say, hey, just do the best you can. Make your own legacy. Make your own. Make make this your own time. Uh, it's your time now. It's not your dad's. It's not mine. It's not your grandfather's or your uncle's. This is your time take advantage of the situation that we have during this COVID period, get bigger, faster, stronger, and, and, and go make your own legacy. It means a lot to me because I have wanted it ever since I was little and I've worked so hard for it. And so it's just like, man, I really want it. I want it bad. And like, I can't say I didn't work for it. It very well could be a reality for him. Um, you know, all parents want to see your kids live out their dreams. And he has put a lot of work into it, um, academically, uh, athletically, room, doing little things. Um, so I do, I hope he gets the opportunity to play. I mean, I personally, I mean, I am the jaded dad, but I, I know he, just watching him, I know he can play. And a lot of it's just due to his, his, his quickness um, and his speed. And now he's got the size uh, really to, to back that up. So, you know, 205 being defensive line, you're a little light. To be honest, but now you're 260 and, and strong as an ox, it's a different ballgame. He hated baseball. <laughs> we tried, we tried, and we tried, and we tried, but uh, yeah, that was that was that was pounding the square peg in a round hole. And he loves playing defense, and we've and he, we finally got him put on the offensive side of the ball because he shouldn't be off the field, shouldn't be off the field too much. He's that kind of a player and that kind of an impact player. But defensively, he just never stops. I mean, his motor's always running. He's always getting after the quarterback, running back, receiver, whatever it is. He's just got that incredible motor that, that doesn't stop. And you could see that, you know, as a freshman when he was playing football and you knew that he was going to step in and, and he wouldn't have big eyes because of his background. And so he, he'd be – He'd be ready to go. Why football? It's fun. <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah, you, know, you get to hit people. You get to tackle people. The crowd is amazing. It, you get to feel like a whole community is behind you. It's so fun. And it's not like other sports like baseball and it's like casual. Well, not casual, but it just doesn't have the same level of just togetherness. Because of the growth that he's making. I mean, when I think they look at him as a junior – he really doesn't have maybe the numbers that they're looking for size wise, you know, athletically height, weight, all that kind of stuff. But he's there now, you know, I mean, after a year, he's just grown so much and he's so much stronger um, and just bigger, taller. And so I, I think that that does hurt a kid like JP who's a late bloomer and that, you know, they, they might get passed over, but he'll get a, he'll get a chance to play and, and somebody's going to steal the kid when they get him. You're planning on do, waiting to sign until after your senior year. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Can you explain why? Leave no stone unturned. Simple as that. Like, you gotta show what you got and show them what you can do. And whoever is like, hey, come play here. Hey, come play here. Well, now you got options. You gotta weigh the options. Like, and you gotta keep in mind it. When you go to college, it's just not sports. You gotta like look at the degree that you want to do. Because I personally want to go into business and marketing. Without senior highlights before National Signing Day, 
it can hurt their chances of playing at the next level. But if football has taught them anything, it's to never give up. I, I mean, it's a lot different. I was, it's, it's kind of, it'll be a late time to decide, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to wait till after my senior season if we have one. I've coached him and his class since they were eight, you know, through the grid kids and all the way up. And then I've been a volunteer assistant with West Valley now from the freshman, the sophomore, the junior into the senior year. So it's been a lot of fun, not just to watch him, but all of them together, uh, kind of grow up together and just teaching them about the game of football, sports in general, and the work that you put in to get the reward and the output that you want. And it's, sometimes it's taken a while, but for the most part, you know, they've done a really nice job. And I really can't think of anything more they could have done to get a full experience playing the game of football and, and, and what it takes just on being prepared, knowing plays, knowing assignments, uh, backing each other up. It's, it's kind of like, you know, in a sense, it's a lot of what happens in life in general. Yeah, at first you're like, oh, no, I'm going to get through it. I'm going to work hard, just do whatever I can, just like any other kid at the game of quarantine. Some kids did better than others. I, uh, um, I struggled, especially after a couple of the months because I started seeing a physical loss. Then it's like, man, I'm just worrying about my lifts not being as high as they should. And then you see all these other kids that are able to work out already. And then it's, it was discouraging, so I got discouraged there for a little bit, but then I've also been blessed with some opportunities for some schools, uh, for some D3 schools now, so that was that was exciting. And then also just getting back in the weight room, I've been stronger basically than I ever was before. So it's awesome to see what God has plans for me and what he's doing in my life. Oh, it hurts me so much, but it can also help me too. Cause like not having a senior year, that means I can't get film out to colleges as soon. Like. I can't go visit colleges even because like there's still like a dead period, but it's also helped me a lot because I can grow up until like my first practice is like February 17th, so I can grow and then so I can even get bigger and faster and stronger and so that's pretty cool. So I feel like it's not the end of the world for me, but it's most certainly like not the best. It's not ideal. At this time, I guess what what has it taught you? Don't give up hope. Just you have to, a lot of people are just, just kind of gave up if it be in their jobs, if it be in everyday life, if it just, it just be in sports or anything. People just gave up hope if it be right away or at the last minute. So I think it's just, it taught me to have hope and faith. Yeah, just, just to have hope and just keep on, keep on grinding like every, all these other players are in the country and knowing I'm not the only one going through this, that there's others and then it's not just us players going through it, but it's also our families going through it. Trying to stay focused and positive when you know that the recruiting aspect is not, is not doing as well as I was, I guess. I just, that's basically the hardest part is just trying not to be negative and trying to be optimistic and think that I'm still going to have opportunities to go play at the next level and I just I guess really the hardest part I guess never mind I would change my mind is just not is knowing that I might or may or may not get to play in the spring I think that's the hardest part is I definitely at least want one more season with my with my brothers